My name's Mikey Rockwell, and I'm on a quest to make games. 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 In this episode, I switch game engines and attempt to make my first ever 3D prototype. I try my hand at 3D rigging and animation, and I record almost the whole thing with an uninitialized camera. In the last episode, I powered on with my Nature Wizard prototype and spent week two upgrading the art style and improving the systems. Again, I had gotten overexcited and taken the game way further than necessary. And as I reached the end of the two weeks, I didn't have an idea for the next prototype. That's when my partner stepped in with an idea of her own. I had made two games back to back in Unity and was feeling a bit burnt out. So I chose this prototype to do a deep dive into Godot. Godot is a free and open source game engine that became a refuge for many disillusioned Unity developers in the Great War of September 2023. But was Godot ready for serious game development? Create a no TD called Doll. The first test was to set up some sprite animations using some free art I found online. Get rid of all these. Get rid of them. Get those. Add eight frames. Press play, set this to 12 frames maybe, and then that looks like run. So far so good. Setting up animations in Godot was super simple. You grab a sheet, set the frames, and label the animations. But things weren't all sunshine and rainbows. I quickly realized that I would have to relearn a lot of the basics in this engine. It was like trying to cook a meal in someone else's kitchen, and every two minutes you're wondering where everything is. But I just kept on chipping away. We've left, right? You bop, 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 bop. And then you can also run real fast. Run, 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 and then walk and then run, and then walk and run, 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 run. I had covered the basics of sprites and input controls, but this was a game about herding stray urban cats into new homes, so we would need a level to play in. I went to the Kenny website looking for 2D art. They make free art packs to help developers. And that's when I discovered the 3D City Starter Kit made especially for learning in Godot. If I was going to make a new game in a new engine, why not introduce a new dimension? Um, I can't seem to select things. What, what's happened? Am I crashing? Oh, have I, did I leave something open? Oh yeah, I did. See, it, the window is hidden. How do I get to the window? Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are we so zoomed in, lads? Can I, okay, I can zoom out. I really took to 3D like a duck to 3D water. Include physics on? Ah, that's what it said. Oh, look, it updates in the scene. Of course, of course it does. And once I had the city models working, I quickly whipped up a controller for a 3D dog placeholder. Wozers, okay. So the walk speed is maybe a little high. Now, the test was, do we collide? We do. With the basic building blocks, I could now build a city. So I just copy pasted those modular pieces until I had what looked like a child's play map. When it came to GDScript, Godot's scripting language, I was largely in the dark, so I employed a free AI assistant named Codemium to show me how things were done. I mostly knew what I was trying to do, I just needed some examples of how to do it in GDScript. Now that we had a dog placeholder and a city to run around in, we needed some cats to herd, but they would need some way to move around the level, and for this I chose Godot's navigation system. Traversable 3D region that nav agents can use for pathfinding. The class is marked as experimental. Okay, so how do we bake it? Ah, oh, bake navigation dish. Hey, did a really bad job. I was pressing lots of buttons, but it still wasn't working. Good thing Godot has great documentation built right into the editor and handy tooltips when you hover over confusing components. Ah, open documentation. Navigation agent. Um, the agent is a U and the marker a U. Can you save the game when you push F5? Non existent function set target location. 
I just couldn't seem to make the navigation mesh build properly. The nav mesh is generated based on level geometry and is like a floor for the nav agents to walk on. So you can get it under the city layout, and if the city layout gets bigger... There just wasn't enough info for the nav mesh, so I tried scaling the whole city up. By 25, navigation gets baked with more information. More information. <laughs> The objects in the scene had been much too small for the nav mesh to generate properly. Pretty cool, what were we doing? Nav mesh. The agent in the target is the target and you save and push play. And nothing. But it still needed a few more YouTube tutorials. Movement target assign. It's, it's doing something. It, it's, it moved. Wow. We had a city, a dog, and a cat. Now to give the cat a mind of its own. Cat brain. Create the cat brain. GD script is an interpreted language, and the way I interpret that, it means there is no compiling when you make changes. This makes iteration much faster. You can even make changes to the code while the game is running, and it will update on the fly. Wow. The cat is wandering around. So now what happens if I make, like, a lot of these cats? Bum 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 bum. Oh, they're all... Okay, so the global position is wrong. position plus. Now each one should go in a little random unit. It can go around. To make the cats react to the dog, they would just move in the opposite direction of the dog when you got close. This way you could herd them around the city. It took a little tinkering and using a plugin called Debug Draw 3D to draw some spheres in the scene to help with visualization, but at last we were herding cats. I was getting more comfortable with the engine, so I felt like I could start playing around with things. <laughs> and I love me a good particle system, so I got to work on having the cats leave behind paw print particles. Here you can see them being a bit confusing as they overlap, but the intention was that they would lead you to cats if you couldn't find them. I added this gold to the city which was a placeholder for a new home for the cats, or perhaps a shelter, and by maneuvering around them you could herd the cats, you could, you could herd the cats, well, if you could herd the cats in they would disappear from the scene. With my confidence in 3D beginning to grow, it was time to take the next step into 3D game production and make a fully animated dog model. Now I have some experience in CGI, but I had never worked with character rigging and animation until now. So I did some research into realistic 3D dog motion and found a beautiful hand-drawn dog walk cycle from a Disney movie. Now it was just a matter of lining up the model with the reference and breathing life into the polygons. With the walk cycle complete, it was easy work to export from Blender and bring the animated 3D dog into Godot. And just like that, I had completed my first fully rigged, animated, and realistic. <laughs> yeah, so I decided to go back to a more simple art style and created this beautiful 3D cat model. So this is going to be our dog. What does a dog look like? Same as a cat, really. Dog has snout. Turns out if you need to make a dog, just make a cat first. Uh, usually we just tape a bunch of cats together. That's a dog. If I ever saw a dog, that's a dog. Now it'll just work, I'm sure. Be the dog. 
this dog as big as a house. With a few tweaks to the models, a little day-night cycle and some street lamps, the game was starting to come together. And your dog looks like a dog. Oh yeah, kinda. I tried to animate a dog and it failed massively. Uh -huh. I made the paw prints only visible when pressing the sniff button, which is kind of strange, but you know. I had the basics of the game down, but instead of expanding the game idea, I just started tinkering with little things. I messed around with adding camera movement to the player controller so you could orbit and tilt the camera, which had some strange results at first, and in the end it probably wasn't right for this game. In the process, I decided to use the internal text editor in Godot and move away from the AI assistant in VS Code. I found that writing the code myself without a crutch helped me think through the problems and retain solutions better. I was able to make the dog show up behind buildings without any code, and that was pretty rad. And I even implemented dog vision with some ray casting to hide the cats when they were out of sight. Again, I wasn't really adding much to the game here. So I decided to leave it there. You could run around a 3D city and chase cats into a goal. While it was pretty simple, I decided it wasn't bad for making a 3D game in a new engine in a week. Switching engines had definitely reduced the scope of what I was able to achieve, but all in all, it was refreshing to try something a bit different. My view of Godot after this project was that it was capable and quirky in equal measure, and most of the problems I face were my own. In the next episode of DevQuest, I jump into my first ever game jam with Ludum Dare 55, but this time my lovely partner Lou is joining me to do the artwork. We'll have three days to make a full game and ship it.